Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to look at the top 10 questions you should ask your mortgage broker to assess whether they're the right broker for you and whether they're going to be able to get your loan across the line. My name's Luke and I talk about all things property, investing and renovations. If you could drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. All right, let's jump into these top 10 questions you need to ask. Now, the first thing is, how experienced are you as a mortgage broker and do you invest in property yourself? You won't want to go through a broker that one, doesn't have a lot of experience and two, hasn't actually bought a property or invested in property themselves. Negotiating and working through a loan application with a mortgage broker is really important and to ensure that they've had the experience and personal experience of building their own por property portfolio is key to ensuring that they can help you do the same. Number two is understanding the fees incurred with the loan. So you need to ask the mortgage broker exactly what the fee structure is and how the broker is going to be paid. A mortgage broker is typically paid in two ways. That is an upfront fee when you settle the loan and then their mortgage broker is entitled, entitled to a residual income if you keep your loan with the bank over a period of time. And that might mean they receive a monthly payment uh, over the first few years of your loan as you keep it with the bank they financed you with. Now there can be a whole host of fees to be aware of and that could include application costs, valuation fees, conveyancing charges, processing fees, lenders mortgage insurance, government fees such as stamp duty. So ask for a fee breakdown on your loan application and what the expected fees are going to be. The next thing to ask your mortgage broker is exactly the steps they're going to take and how they're going to communicate the process to you for your loan application. You want to know exactly the steps from starting your loan application to conditional approval to unconditional approval all the way through to the settlement of your property purchase. It's important that your mortgage bro broker can communicate this information to you, typically via email or phone calls, and that you have a clear understanding of the timeline it takes to get a loan settled. Number four is to look at how much of a deposit you will need. Now it's important to ask your broker what they think the deposit based on your cash position you should take for the property purchase. In some instances, you might be better to actually pay lenders mortgage insurance so you can keep more money in offset, for example, for renovations. Or depending on your situation, you might wanna put in a 20% deposit to avoid the lenders mortgage insurance. Ask your broker what the deposit you will need and what your deposit options are for a property purchase. Now, the next one seems to be the most important point that people focus on, but it's not always the most important part of a deal, and that is the interest rate. Understanding that different banks and different financial institutions offer different rates and discussing with your broker rate options as well as the type of flexibility you can get from your loan and how quickly the loan application can be processed. So ask your broker whether to look at variable or fixed rates and look at what best suits you and your situation. Now number six is refinancing a current property in your portfolio to access equity. This is a really critical component of building a property portfolio as you're unlikely to have cash on hand each time to go and buy another property. So discussing with your broker your refinancing options and how much equity you can access and use to buy another property is really important and also looking at the lead time of getting that refinancing done before you can go out and buy another property. Now number seven is a really important point and this is looking at cross collateralization. Now that might sound like a massive term, but all cross collateralization means is you roll multiple assets into one loan and you really wanna steer clear of this. You don't ever wanna put multiple assets into one loan because it ties it up with that bank and can make it difficult to refinance equity, to have control over your money and move to other banks and give you flexibility down the track. Now, plenty of people have been caught in this situation in the last 10 to 20 years, but it's becoming more widely known to not cross collateralize your assets and to keep each house with its own individual loans and to keep everything separate. This will give you the most control. So be wary if your mortgage broker is looking to go with a fast and quick application because in some circumstances, if you've got your first property, such as your own home, and you're looking to buy an investment property, some brokers might want to try and push you into getting one loan for the two properties because it will be easier. But you really want to make sure that you have an individual loan for each property 
to protect yourself from the banks and to give you more flexibility down the track. Now, number eight is looking at personal recommendations for a broker. One of the best ways to find a broker that is good <laughs> and that is gonna give you a product on time is to go through word of mouth. So ask the broker if they have any testimonials or recommendations, and this will allow you to assess whether other people thought the broker did a great job for them uh, and whether they are the right broker for you. Number nine is getting your documents in order for your broker and asking the broker upfront for a list of documents you'll need to submit for your loan application. This can be one of the most annoying parts of going through the financing process because property is really a game of finance. It's not a game of bricks and mortar. The most important part of a property deal is to get the finance in order so that you can actually secure the deal and move on and build your wealth over time. So be sure to ask your broker exactly what documents you need and get them all ready in place and on time to your broker to allow them to process your application quickly. Number 10 is looking at your personal circumstances and asking the broker what loan best suits you and best suits your portfolio and goals. Now there's a real difference, as I said before, between a normal everyday mortgage broker that just does first home or new home purchases when people are buying and moving to another house compared to an investment savvy mortgage broker that has done a property investment portfolio themselves and understands how to build a large property portfolio. The difference between the two is one's not gonna be able to help you grow your portfolio and understand the structure required to do that. And the investment savvy mortgage broker is going to be able to help you build your portfolio and access equity again and again so that you can grow your wealth over time. So ask the broker exactly what loan they think's best for you and why. And hopefully they can give you a well-supported and clear answer to give you clarity in your situation and get your loan across the line. Now to finish with a bonus tip, you don't always need a mortgage broker. If you're going out to buy your first property purchase or your first investment, your circumstances are likely to be pretty simple. And that means you're not gonna really see much more value going to a large institution over there or a medium-sized institution over here. You're not really gonna get into hot water uh, for your very first purchase. But as you buy more and more properties and you grow your portfolio, you're likely to see a lot more value by using a mortgage broker who can help you structure your portfolio and give you the right loans in each of your properties to allow you to grow and manage your wealth. I hope you found today's video interesting and useful and use these questions or these points in your discussion with your mortgage broker or your bank as you go forward in growing your property portfolio. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.